Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today is another segment of Mail Call. Hate wasting your time. Let's get right into it. Okay, uh, the first question goes to Andrew Oxenrider, and he is applying G Techniques Crystal Serum Light. And instead of using EXO, he wants to use uh, C2V3 as a sacrificial layer. How much time do you wait in between layering uh, the C2V3 on top of the Crystal Serum Light? This, you know, you can kind of use this strategy for all coatings. I know it says one to two hours before applying EXO, but after putting a, car, a coating on a car and uh, sending it on its way, sometimes within four hours, um, four hours minimum. And if it's really nice that day, that evening, I'll let the customer take it. Uh, and I'll wait four hours before I put any type of a topper on. It doesn't matter what coating there is. Um, I know there are uh, 12 and 24 hour cure times for a lot of coatings, but you can honestly, if you're in a pinch, if you're doing this at home, uh, if you're getting a customer's car finished and they need to take it home, they've traveled to get their, their car coated, you could do it within four hours. So uh, put on the Crystal Serum Light, wait four hours, put on your C2V3 or your, your EXO within an hour or two, and you're ready to go. The best thing to do is let it wait that 12 to 24 hour cure period. That's where it goes from zero to 85% cured. And it just takes the next seven to 10 days to go from 85 to 100. But if you can wait 12 to 24 hours best, four hours minimum. Okay, the next question goes to Sean DeRosa, and he wants to know how to utilize CarPro's Essence and Essence Plus and when to use them. Well, it's kind of, it's going to be easy for you to know when to use them because they are two different beasts. And I have both of them right here, Essence and Essence Plus. I use them both. Uh, Car Pro Essence is going to be the primer. Um, you're going to be able to clean up if you maybe do a one or two step correction and you have a little bit of haze and you want to bring out some clarity. This has some very fine abrasives and you can clean up a correction and also lay down the foundation or the building blocks for a coating with this because it has a little bit of SiO2 in the formula. When it comes to the Essence Plus, this has no abrasives. This can be used uh, depending on the pad you choose to jewel or reinvigorate a coating that may have a little bit of imperfections on the coating itself. And without um, an abrasive and just being a jeweling agent, again with a little bit of SiO2 in it, it's going to be pad dependent on the imperfection on the coating. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you're, you're still not really sure, get back to me. But uh, Essence Before, Essence Plus, after the coating is cured. Okay, next. Brian, I see a lot of really interesting cars coming in and out of your shop. Can you get footage of a C8 Corvette or the new Ford Bronco? C8 Corvette, been there, done that. I'll be sure to get some footage next time one comes through. Uh, the Bronco, hey, I'm even interested in one of those for myself, and I'm not a Ford guy. Uh, many different types of substrates on that vehicle, inside and out, from uh, satin matte finishes to gloss finishes. So absolutely, I'll get some footage. It all starts with the standard base model starting at $28,000 and works its way up, way up from there, from the base model to the Big Bend, the Black Diamond, the Badlands, the Wild Track, the first edition, including a 2.3 liter, four-cylinder engine, seven-speed manual trans. Okay, moving on from James. Uh, what product line do you recommend for a beginner uh, that would be economical and effective at the same time? Uh, and he uses Chemical Guys right now. There's nothing wrong with Chemical Guys. Um, some of their products are fairly priced. Some are expensive. The problem I have with them is they seem to have 28 different products for just each and every subject. It just seems like they're, you know, they're trying to separate you from uh, your hard-earned money. Turtle Wax is another good one. Uh, I have one more you can add to the list. Uh, Max Shine, besides uh, ha having tools and pads, you know, polishers are known for their polisher. I have polishers here from them that have hundreds of corrections on them. Not every polisher is perfect, but they're very effective and they are priced right. They now are pumping out products left and right to help you um, complete your arsenal with tools and chemicals. Here are just a few examples. 
Here is just a small example of what they have available. I use some of these. This is an all-in-one polish and protectant. They have heavy, medium, and light duty cutting compounds and polishes. This is mist. This is a hydrophobic uh, sealant for your vehicle. This is a car wash shampoo refresh. This is an all-in-one conditioner, very interesting product for vinyl and leather and plastics. Flex. I've been using this a lot. This is an eye remover and wheel cleaner. I don't have much of this left either. This is an all-in-one cleaner. Um, to be able to uh, take care of light duty work as well as some harsher uh, real dirty soiled areas, maybe even in the engine compartment. Uh, not much of the clay lube left either. Very effective, a ton of lubrication. So yeah, just a small example uh, of the lineup and I'll give you uh, a quick demonstration of a few of these that I have here. So let's start with the all-in-one conditioner. It cleans and conditions leather, vinyl, rubber, plastic. It is uh, $12.99 for the smallest size, and that is 16 ounces or 500 milliliters. They have larger sizes up to $27. And all you do is put the product on the surface, massage it into the surface, and then wipe up the residue or whatever dirt you pick up. Uh, it will clean, condition, and protect all in one shot. Here is a rather dirty interior for what I normally get, and I'll show you the difference this can make. And just, I mean, with no effort whatsoever, I'm just quickly showing you some of the products. They are effective. Uh, next up, the all-in-one cleaner. It's an eco-friendly cleaner, pH neutral, can safely clean engine compartments, paint, wheels, tires, leather, fabric, plastics, vinyl, and much more. Uh, Twelve ninety-nine for sixteen ounces or five hundred milliliters. Mist is a versatile product. You can use it as a clay a lubricant, a drying aid, a spray sealant, and much more. We'll lay down a hydrophobic layer of protection on the surface of whatever you're trying to protect or condition. Mist starts at $12.99 and goes up depending on the size. You can also get a lot of these products in kits. If you're just starting out or you just want to start taking care of your car, you can get a bundle kit and get everything in one shot. I'll bring you in closer. You can see how easy this product is to use. Okay, next, Jesus Melian wants to know which gloss meter I recommend. I have the Lantec GM6. I'll show it to you uh, in great detail right now. The GM6 from Lantec is a very economical unit, and you don't have to purchase anything expensive. I have quite a few of these, and this one works fine. Here is the key to get the most out of them. Uh, let me show you first what you get in the kit itself. A nice carrying case uh, with protection on the inside. You have your instructions, and you definitely uh, need the calibration unit right here uh, so here is one key keep the calibration unit clean as clean as you can possibly get it and they supply the rag to get that done the second thing to get the most out of your unit is to keep it fully charged uh, a fully charged unit is going to be the most accurate uh, and then uh, doing your calibration every time before you use the, the unit. So keep the calibration tool clean, calibrate it before every use, and, and actually if you're making multiple um, measurements on different substrates, uh, do your calibration before each one. So that's very important. And then keep it fully charged and you're going to have a very nice unit to work with. They come uh, 20 degree, 60 degree, and 80 degree. Uh, I'm used to uh, what the 60 degree tells me, so that's what I use most, and this one works perfectly fine for me. 
Okay, the next question goes to Dennis, and he wants to know what's the best way to use the rotary on edges, uh, contours, body lines. And even though I just sat down and got comfortable, I'm going to go back out, grab a test panel, and I'll do better than explain it to you. I'll quickly show it to you. Using this test panel for demonstration, you have uh, a ridge here, you have a contour body line, you have a swale going up over the inner fender well uh, above the door. So there are quite a few different instances where the uh, rotary is not going to be flat. And for the most part, you want to keep your rotary flat. Uh, there are some instances where the, you're going to have to have a little bit of a tilt. Uh, and one of those, for an example, is if it starts to act up on you. You don't have enough product down on the panel, or you're using a difficult pad and it starts to skip. Just uh, very uh, lightly take it on a slight angle and take it back down. That'll straighten it out for you if you're having that problem. Uh, but different angles will be needed for some of these ridges and contours. When I'm up on a ridge, like this I'm not going to be uh, balancing the rotary up on the edge itself I'm going to be coming up to the edge with the edge of the pad and I'm going to be working my way up from the bottom of the valley if that makes any sense here and I'll show you I'll grab the rotary real quick uh, when it comes to this body line here I'm going to have the rotary on a slight angle so the shape of the pad which will be five inch or six inch uh, will fit in this nice little valley here and cut evenly all the way across. I'm also going to do the same thing on that body line. And if uh, we have this ridge over here, uh, we're going to work up to the edge of the ridge. Then I'm going to work my way up from the bottom up. And we're never going to be balancing that polisher on top of the peak of the ridge. That's where you have a chance of burning through. The best thing to do if you're not sure of yourself is to put a line of masking tape right on top of the ridge. The um, pinstripe tape works the best. And then when you're done, remove it before you get to the polishing stage. So let me give you a few, uh, few examples. The polisher will be running, so I will not be able to speak, but you're going to get kind of the idea of what I'm talking about. So we never have the polisher right on top of the peak of this ridge here. We work our way up to it from the bottom of the, uh, the ridge or the, the contour or the body line. And we can also work our way from the top down and stop right on the edge. Laying the rotary flat here, you're going to burn an edge there, you're going to burn an edge there. A slight 15 to 20 degree tilt will get the pad perfectly aligned in that valley where you can do your cutting and move on. And that's how I work that little swell, um, keeping it flat till I get to a nice contour where I tilt the polisher slightly. An edge like that, I'm just going to simply grab a smaller polisher to take care of it. I'm never going to use something this size to work on a little portion of the panel. That's where you run into trouble. Okay, guys, that will do it for today's segment of Mail Call. Uh, I will supply a link down in the description box and also the comments section where you can send your questions or simply join me on Instagram and message them to me. Uh, great questions. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will catch you in the next video.